Hi. There you are. Hi, Jenny. There I am. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me along. Um, I, I'm going to um, just be quite brief, to be honest, this morning. I will introduce myself very quickly and give you a virtual tour of the computer halls. Um, so currently our production is coming out of of Shinfield Park, which is in Reading in, in Berkshire in the UK, but um, we'll also talk to you about our new data centre. So my name is Jenny Rourke. I'm head of production services section at ECNWF, which which basically means I'm in charge of a, a collection of three teams who are responsible for acquiring, bringing in the observations and other data that we need to run our models, processing that data, um, a team that's responsible for running the operational models. Um, obviously, most of the time it works perfectly well automatically, but if there's any issues, we, we're constantly updating it and improving it and working on model upgrades and they they implement those improvements and, and upgrades. Um, and then there's a team who's responsible for the dissemination of our data. So that's getting it out to our users um, and also the archiving of, of the data. That's a very important part of what we do at ECNWF. We are responsible for the world's biggest meteorological archive, which, we, which is called Mars. And that is what we call a perpetual archive. It goes back to the very beginnings of when we were producing models. Um, at ECNWF and we, we, we store all the everything that goes into creating the model so that it could be reproduced in future if it was ever required and also all the output of, of the models um, of our core model output anyway which is really uh, interesting and, and it's Jenny, very big. Jenny, Hello? Jenny, sorry, sorry Jenny for interrupting. I just wanted to make sure are you sharing a presentation at the moment with us? No, no yeah, I'm just good. talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just talking, um, just giving a bit of background, really, if that's OK. Um, so basically, currently, all of my section is um, based in, in Reading in the UK, and we probably will stay in the UK. We've got a data centre that we were, we're currently well, it's built and we're now populating with a, with a new supercomputer and all the other kit that goes with it in, in Bologna. So. I'm going to share with you a video which starts off in Shenfield Park in, in Reading and it shows you the, the current computer hall. And the reason why we're, we're showing you that is because that's that is where the, the forecast is coming out of now. So that will give you a little bit of background as to what um, how we run the models there now. And then it will it'll, it'll move on to a little bit of video about the new data center. This, this video is probably about six or nine months old now so it's a little bit out of date because over the past six nine months we've had a lot more building work going on in Bologna um, so I'll hopefully end by showing you a few photographs as well which are a bit more up to date of the new site in Bologna and I, I guess it'll be easiest if then you could um, ask any questions um, at the end so I'm going to try and share with you a video um this is the next trick isn't it so i'm going to do firefox full screen um can you i don't know if you can see that can not yet not okay yet. one second all right i'm just going to share my entire screen i think that's going to be the easiest way can you see yeah. this now? Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, it's it's on now. Perfect. Okay, it won't. Ha I'm just going to speak over the top of it if that's okay. So just just shout out if for any reason it stops working. That'd be the easiest thing. So this video will give you a virtual tour of ECNWF, um, the computer hall. The building is around 40 years old, but the supercomputer is six to seven years old. Our supercomputer is a Cray XC40 system split in two halves to compute clusters which are positioned in two different rooms within the computer hall. Here we see the first half of the supercomputer. It's made of many cabinets, each pair of cabinets forming one electrical group. The small units in between are blower units uh, with fans to cool the air. In this compute cluster, we've around three and a half thousand nodes. Each node has two 
Intel processors with 36 physical cores per processor. The Cray supercomputer has around a quarter of a million cores and is currently ranked about 75th top supercomputer in the world. We run operational and research work on each compute cluster. And we have a very efficient way of scheduling the work to make full use of the supercomputer. Each cluster has around 10 petabytes of disk storage, which can be accessed by both clusters. Here we see, um, we'll see one of the new IBM tape libraries, um, which is replacing our current Oracle tape library. And we're about to enter the tape library itself, which is this is hit here. This is the home of our data handling system. It's the largest meteorological archive in the world with 388 petabytes of data growing by around 250 terabytes each day. That's one of the robot arms that can collect all the tapes. The big gray cabinet at the back holds the Oracle tape library with the robotic infrastructure allowing us to access tapes. And this is where we permanently store all of our operational output and some research experiments. Each library can hold about 10,000 tapes with around 200 tape drives. So this is the new data center in Italy. It used to be an old tobacco factory and um, we're currently turning it into a new data, state of the art data center. The new supercomputer is currently being built on site, but we'll be able to show you some of the recent photos to give you a glimpse of what it is looking like now. Um, this is some pictures taken earlier in the year when it was very much still under construction. The new supercomputer that we're building as we speak is an Atos Sequana XH2000 system with around four times more cores than the current Cray, around a million cores. It will be in four clusters over two computer halls. The data handling system with all those tapes and robotic arms will also be moved to Bologna and we're hoping to be operational out of the new site in spring 2022. We already have some staff who have moved to Bologna and from early 2022 we will have a full complement of staff out there with about 25 people ranging from network engineers to forecast analysts to 24-7 operators. So that's the, um, the video. And I'll quickly skip to a PowerPoint, which hopefully you can also see, which has just got some more up-to-date pictures. So I <laughs> don't know if you've already experienced the ducks of ECNWF, but they've already managed to get one duck, um, which is almost like our mascot to the new data center. Uh, but it is looking very nice. It no longer looks like an old tobacco factory. It does look very modern and, um, and beautiful, to be honest. They've done a lot of work to, on the outside as well. Um, this is the, um, the sort of office space where the 25 people will, will be sitting. The analysts will be working away. Um, if there's any issues, they can help um, to be in what we call proximity to the supercomputer and help solve any operational issues. Most of the time, actually, to be honest, we'll be able to work the supercomputer from Reading over the network connection. But if for any reason the network went down, it was the guys on site that will be having to sort the problems out. Got some nice um, just communal facilities and meeting rooms, as you'd expect from from a data center. And this this is how the supercomputer data hall was sort of looking just before the Atos started to be built. So you can see you sort of get a scale. This is half of the data center. And then they started putting in servers. You can see they're busy connecting them up to the to the to the sort of network that runs along the cables in the roof. Um, this is the, what we call the cloud ferro infrastructure. This is the this the infrastructure that that work that is responsible for running our um, climate data store. Just put up the Copernicus um, output, and there are the two um, comparing the two centres. So obviously on the left we've got our Shinfield Shinfield Road Reading site, and and on the right our new Bologna facility, and. That's the end of my tour. So <laughs> very happy to take questions. I'm, I'm I'm not a HPC expert. I'm not a supercomputer expert, but I'll do my best if you have any questions. Thank you, Jenny. We'll wait and see if there are any questions. Okay, if anything comes to mind later, um, I'd say by all means get in touch via Chantelle and we'd be very happy to answer any of the questions if anything comes to you later. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you, Jenny. There is something nice. coming up, I think. Somebody's typing. Oh. Okay, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Um, do we use the supercomputer mainly for operational forecast or also for other research purposes? It is a very good question. Um, we use it for both, very much for both. And um, the priority would always be for the operational forecast because obviously people need that for time critical purposes all around the world. Um, but we are running all the time a lot of research experiments and these are for a variety of reasons. Therefore, we sort of plan years and years ahead for our research and improvements that we're going to make to our models. Oh, Sam said he used it during his PhD. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the people who currently work in ECNWF will be using it to test improvements they're planning on making for our models for the future. Um, if we're wanting to put a, 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 one of these changes into operations, we run a, a parallel suite, we call it, to sort of test how that would work before it goes into operations. Um, we open parts of the supercomputer up to, to our member and cooperating states and to some university people who can use parts of the supercomputer for their research experiments as well, or for their operational use. So for example, Meteo France, um, Israel, so there's lots of our, our member and cooperating states who have got a, who run some of their operational models on our supercomputer for different for different reasons as well. And we've got a very sophisticated um, software which allows us to schedule the work so that we can make sure at those peak times when our operational models running obviously there will be less capacity for the research experiments to run. So they tend to run in the gaps between our operational forecast runs. Sarah. 